You blew it. You could have done such a cool reveal and you blew it. It's still a cool looking device. Don't get me wrong. I can't wait to try it out for myself, but you totally blew the reveal. Today, I'm starting a new segment on Crazy Ken's Tech Misadventures called Crazy Ken's Tech Breakdown, where I break down the tech news and depending on how that goes, I might break down myself. And today, we're gonna talk mostly about the Microsoft Surface Neo. Yes, there were other products introduced at today's Microsoft event, but the Neo is the newest of them all. Okay, oh, there's a, a little bit to unpack with this one, but uh, at the same time, there's nothing to unpack. That's because this thing is not coming out until next year. I was surprised, I was watching the keynote and I saw this cool trailer video and then boom, holiday 2020. And I'm just thinking, if it's coming out a year from now, why the heck are you talking about it now? It's gonna be a whole year. You know, it's, this is the whole thing. You give away all this information a year before your product launches, you start to get a little paranoid. Yeah, no kidding. Maybe you shouldn't have announced it so soon. But then I thought, and thought slowly and sympathetically about the subject. It makes sense as to why they're announcing this a year in advance. One, this thing is running a new version of Windows called Windows 10 X. It is designed specifically for dual screen tablets. Dudes are gonna need to take their time to make apps for this thing. They need to get this out ahead of time so people can make software that actually runs on this thing. We all know what happens when you release an awesome piece of hardware that doesn't have much software for it. Apple wants the Macintosh to be taken seriously in the office and I'm sorry, but I just don't think that's ever gonna happen. Yeah, but that's not all. The space of dual screen devices is getting kind of competitive, especially with what Samsung is doing with their phone. So Microsoft wants to get in pretty early with this, even though it's not done, it's just a prototype. But this is kind of cool, because remember that Courier device, or however the heck you pronounce it? It was featured, I think, about 10 years ago now. And it's kind of cool that they didn't give that up. They're actually doing it now, and they're making the Surface Neo. And whenever it comes out, if I can get my hands on it, I'd love to bring it into the layer with me and uh, try it out. So, let's start unpacking this thing. The specs on this thing are... Okay, sorry. Yes, right, we don't have spec information yet because it's a little early. Uh, availability, yep, we did say <laughs> holiday 2020, which I guess you don't want to say a specific month and you don't want to say a specific season because I think seasons are different depending on where you are in the world. So, you know, and you don't want to say a specific holiday because you don't want to exclude people. So we're just going to say holiday 2020. We'll see how that goes. Pricing, yeah, we're not going to know anything about that either. It's way too early on. But there's some other stuff we can look at. Taking a look at the press images here, you'll see that it looks pretty beautiful. I really like the whole notebook aspect of it. You can just like fold it up into a little notebook and it's just a cute little notebook and you can take it with you wherever you go. And it does look like it's running a new environment. It's Windows 10 X, like I talked about earlier, but the interface looks different. It doesn't look like it has live tiles and it has a different type of start menu as well. The other cool thing is you can use a hardware keyboard if you want, and then you have a touch, like a very thick touch bar on top for other parts of the interface. And you can also slide the keyboard up and boom, that kind of surprised me. You get a little trackpad area there too. So you can use it in different postures and it has different purposes. And that's, you know, something Microsoft has been pushing for a long time, mostly with the Surface line. I remember when that thing was a big ass table. One day your computer will be a big ass table. Yeah, good times. It's uh, evolved. It's definitely evolved. There is also a pen that works with it and it will magnetically attach and charge as well. Okay, so that's all fine and dandy, but <laughs> one thing that kind of peeved me about this whole thing wasn't the product itself or the fact that we don't even get to see it for over a year still, it was the way they presented it. I know I'm getting kind of nitpicky here, but it's kind of what I do. This is a clip from the keynote address. Just take a look. This is Surface Neo. Yeah, that's not how you're supposed to do that, guys. You don't do the climax of a movie and then cut to the exposition. You're supposed to have this big buildup and then boom, big reveal. Here is the device. What you did was you walked into the middle of the audience. So first of all, it was hard for a lot of people to see. Sorry, uh, press member, you, 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 and you. I'm very sorry about that. And then you pulled it out for two seconds and then boom, everything goes dark. So everyone raising their cameras to try to take photos couldn't see it all of a sudden. You had a peak moment of excitement there and you ruined it by turning off the lights and cutting to a very long video. Why? 
Why, why, why? Oh, you blew it. You could have done such a cool reveal and you blew it. It's still a cool looking device. Don't get me wrong. I can't wait to try it out for myself, but you totally blew the reveal. And I don't know if they're going for like a cozy kind of setup, but their stages always look very tight. Like the audience is always like right next to the stage. I don't know if that's intimacy or what, but it kind of makes it a little cramped looking. And if you're walking out in the middle of the audience, like it's kind of hard for press to take photos because now they're going like this with their cameras all the time. You can see it. Just stay on the stage, stay a little elevated so the press can actually do what they're there to do. Cool product, but the presentation was kind of weird. There were some funny jokes in there though. It's hard to tell people your kids are beautiful, but this product is beautiful. <laughs> in my opinion, it's kind of hard to beat a good old Steve note. These are not three separate devices. This is one device. And we are calling it iPhone. Another thing that surprised me is that there's an Intel chip in here. I thought this would be ARM based with how small it is, but I guess, you know, that's another reason why we need to wait a year for this. There is an Intel chip in here, so hopefully it performs well. However, there is not an Intel chip in the Surface Pro X. They're, they're going ARM there. It's the SQ1. It's a custom Microsoft chip that they worked on with Qualcomm. So I guess they just want to ditch Intel for the X, but with the Surface Pro 7, the new Pro 7, that is still an Intel system. Microsoft also kind of surprised us with the Surface Duo. So I guess they're doing phones again. That'll work, right? How much do you want to bet that's not going to work? Does the kin ring a bell? Your Zune and your kin and a lot of other hardware. It doesn't seem to last too long, but you still do a great job. You're a good company. Speaking of hardware, the Surface Buds. I, I'm trying to keep a straight face. It looks like you just put a pop socket in your ear. Oh my gosh. And people say the AirPods look ridiculous. Like the AirPods look, I always thought the AirPods look fine, but now compared to these freaking pop socket earphones, uh, the Surface Buds, oh. Yeah, I don't really want to be walking around with those in my ear. I don't know if you want to, but if I wanted to put a pop socket in my ear, I would have put a pop socket in my ear. So there was a lot of stuff talked about, but the biggest thing I was waiting for was that dual screen device, but I guess we're not going to see it for a year. But whenever I can get my hands on it, I'd love to bring it down to the layer and show it off to you guys. Let me know what you think about any of these products. If you want to take a look at other episodes of Crazy Ken's Tech Adventures, it's a very bingeable show. We have over a hundred, so do check them out. Plus, if you're watching this on Wednesday, tomorrow, my iPhone 11 Pro camera comparison against the DSLR is coming out too. That's gonna be a good one. Don't miss it. Thanks for sticking with me. Catch the crazy and pass it on. Yeah.